Okay, welcome to part four, possibly, of this um, tutorial series in this video. Um, I'm going to basically carry on from where we left off. Uh, this should be the last part, as there is not very much left to do. So, in the last part we had uh, worked out what size and where to copy the image from, and now we're just going to do that. We're going to actually copy the, so the a portion of the source image, resized, onto this new image that we've created and then we need to output this image um, in the right format based on the original type. Okay, so let's basically do that. Um, yeah, right, so the function is called image copy resampled. There is also image copy but it won't resample so you get sort of blocky looking effects. Okay, so the first it takes ten parameters, so we'll try our best to explain them. Um, hopefully, it will make some sort of sense. Um, uh, hang on. Okay. Right. Yeah. Um, these ten parameters are. Uh, okay, the first one. Let's type them out as we go along. The first one is the destination image. Um, so where you want to copy the image onto, which is the image we just created, which was thumb. Um, the second one is the source image. Um, so where you're copying from, basically. Both should both of these should be image resources, GDE image resources. Um, okay. So that this was, if you remember, we got it from the file at the top, and we just gave it the source variable, SRC, like so. Um, the next two are the destination position, so you could copy this onto like a 50 by 50 pixel offset from the top or something if you want to do that. Like if you want to build up a nicer image or something, like like a I don't know if you were sort of making a graphic with PHP, you might want to copy bits from other images on uh, into different positions. That's what that's for, I guess. But we're just going to use zero zero, which means top left. Um, the next two are the uh, X and Y position of the sort of on the source image that you want to start copying from, which we have defined as this source position array. So we're just going to pass that in here: source pos x and source pos not post y. The next one is the um, size of the image, the new size of the image that you're copying, which we also defined in this new size array. Um, so let's go to new, let's go to, let's type in new size 0x and new size 1 for y. Um, the final, um, the final um, two are the width and height of the source image, which if you remember we got using the get image size function and they were in the 0 and 1 key again for x and y so let's just pass those in as well so it's source size 0 and source size 1 so that should now resize the image but what it won't do is create the image um, the image file what we need to do now is basically the same logic if statement at the top um, again it's a bit annoying having to compare the same things twice um, there is a way around it using variable functions which is something I will introduce later on, so I'm not going to do that now. But just so you know, this is not technically the best way. I mean, it's not going to be compared to um, the image manipulation. This if else, if else, blah 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 check is going to be such a small fraction of the performance, like the time loading the page, that it's fine to just do it twice. So we're going to do that for now. I will introduce variable functions at some other later stage. So instead of creating a new image, we want to just remove each of these. And in each of these cases, we want to create the image type from the thumb uh, image, because now we've copied on the resized cropped image to it. Uh, I mean, what we want to do for if the original image was a JPEG, we want to create a JPEG. If it was a PNG, create a PNG. If it was a GIF, we need to create a new GIF. And you can just create them all as PNG or, or as one of these types, which is fine, but I prefer to keep them in the same format. So to create a new JPEG image, we just do image JPEG, like so. First parameter, as always, is the uh, image resource. 
which we're just going to do like so um, and the optional second parameter which is the path to the file where we're going to save it um, if you don't supply this um, file the image is output directly to the screen by this function um, so yeah we're going to supply the second parameter and it'll save a file um, and that file uh, that sorry that file oh yeah yeah that path that we're going to supply where it's going to save the file is going to be thumbs slash thumbs slash and then the image name which was get image like so and then we're going to copy this into the other three if blocks just change the function because they all work in the same way um, except the similar to before we had image create from JPEG now it's image JPEG image PNG and image GIF like so so that is the end of the uh, thumbnail creation um, what we need to do after that once the image has been created and saved is redirect the browser to the image so now we just add in the header header location header which is what we're sending I'm going to send them to thumbs slash get image. That's the file name that we saved. Okay, um, so now this should be ready for a test. Um, I'm just going to make sure that there are no files in the thumbnails folder. There are not. If we go back to our page and reload this, you see we get redirected to. Um, not sure what image that was, but that looks a little bit wrong. Anyway, we'll see in a minute. Um, we get redirected to the um, full image name, and so basically the source attribute will be re redirected here, which is fine. That works. You can do that. Um, and also, if we go to our thumbs folder and hit reload, you see the thumbnail has been created. And if I open it up, you see it's um, 250 by 200. What should have happened is that the top and bottom should have been cropped off and the width should have been fitted. So if I go back to our full gallery and just scroll down and open the gallery page, we should get the same outputs we got before, which it looks like we are. If I just wait for a few more of these to load up, we'll be able to check properly. Yeah, that looks good to me. Actually, they all look a little bit lower than they should. That could be a um, result of the rounding. Or probably they're actually, they're probably just off-center. Mm. No, yeah, they do. They look lower. Huh. Okay, what did, what did we do? We did... Um, what, we'll, what we'll be controlling this height is this source position. Uh, here. So the new size height minus the thumb height divided by 2 uh, should be the width of a single um, bar that needs to be removed. Um, I did do it differently previously, which is a little odd. Um, okay, well, let's not worry too much about this. Uh, for some reason, I'm. yeah. Okay, well, that's essentially the essence of it, but I'm just looking at my previous code, and I actually did it slightly differently. I served just to, um, well, after this, I multiplied by um, the size, the old size over the new size for some reason, which seems odd, actually, thinking about it. But let, yeah, let's see what difference that makes. And then we'll try to understand what's going on if this improves. So source size, uh, yeah, source size zero divided by new size zero. Sorry, they should be ones, not zeros. Looking at the wrong line. Okay, so let's delete our thumbnails. Let's reload this. How many are there? It's done them all. So let's remove all of those. And then reload our page. See, so now we get the images in the middle. So that's good. It's fixed. 
Um, what we're we doing, we're multiplying by the amount that the image has been reduced by. Oh, of course, yeah. Obviously, you need to do that. Otherwise, yeah. That's okay. Sorry. Um, uh, what we were doing there, we were uh, working out how much has been cropped, and then we were multiplying by um, that amount. But we were doing it sort of to the original image size, not the processed image size. You see, now all these are in the right place. Um, so we'll need to make that modification to the other. There's others as well. Um, so I'll just go and do that now. Um, basically, we just need to copy this section here. Actually, let's copy this whole second parameter, like so. Oh no! Actually, I'll just type it out. Okay. So the only one, only other one that needs to be changed is this case when the image is wider, um, and this new size zero minus thumb width um, needs to be itself. It needs to be multiplied by the amount that the width has been reduced by. So we're going to multiply by um, effectively it's the um, aspect sort of aspect ratio anyway it's the reduction factor I suppose there's not really a good way to explain this unfortunately so anyway let's just do it and hopefully you'll be able to follow along if you experiment with this you should follow and understand what's actually happening but for now at least it's working so yeah so this was source size 0 divided by new size 0. Um, so that's the last modification that needs to be done to this script and now we have a complete system. Um, one last thing you might want to do is just in the same check here you might want to check if the image variable contains any ty any slashes because that would indicate that someone was potentially trying to go um, up a upper level or into a new directory but that's just a quick security thing. Uh, they won't really be able to get any information out. The only thing they might be able to do is view images, but they'd be able to do that anyway, so... A bit pointless, really. Okay, so that is the end of this tutorial. Um, I'll just delete the thumbnails folder entirely and demonstrate that it'll be recreated and we're back to the starting point. So if I load this up again, you see that the I just reload this. The thumbnails folder has been created. It currently contains 31 items. Um, the number of items will be growing slightly, so I refresh this. Click again. You see it's still cont it contains 68 now. Uh, I think. Oops. If I go to properties, drag this in a bit. 104. I think it'll update in a moment. Will it? The size certainly should. Uh, maybe not. Anyway, there you go. That's the. Um, end of this tutorial so hopefully this will be a useful script to you don't forget you can download the free one from xhcp.co.uk something i've made okay so that's the end and thank you for watching hopefully you found some of this image manipulation stuff useful okay sorry for the uh, fairly obvious jump cut and extra edited on bit here but it's been pointed out that i forgot something fairly important, also fairly trivial but quite critical to the functioning of the system. Basically what I've forgotten to do is link the images to their larger versions like I demonstrated before. So if I hover over these images you see the link at the bottom of my browser window is always gallery.php which is sort of what an empty string, an empty quotes means. I'll just explain that in a moment. So if I click on any of these the page just reloads, it doesn't actually link to the image. So what we need to do is just go to our file, scroll down, this is what I meant here. If an empty href, like an empty action, just means the current page. So, yeah, that's that. So, what you just need to do is add the um, image variable name in here, because that contained the name of the image file in the current directory. So, let's just add both of these in, like so. Go back to our browser, hit reload. Uh, now, if I hover over these, you see the image is um, the link, sorry, at the bottom of my browser window is linking to the image name. If I click on it, we just get the image as expected from the demonstration. It's quite a nice one to leave it on. Um, so yeah, that's that. Sorry about the little update that I had to add on at the end. Um, I don't think the video quality of the first part will have been affected too much. I did have to download it from YouTube to add on this little bit and then re-upload it. So if it looks a bit dodgy, sorry about that, and at least you know why. Um, so yeah, overall, whoops. Anyway, thank you for watching and thank you for not being hopefully not being too bothered by this stupid little bit at the end.